Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Mircea and I'm a network engineer at Cloudflare. I'm also a member and maintainer of the Nepal automation community. I uh, sometimes uh, do tools for network automation in general. I've integrated Nepal into a well-known automation framework called SALT. I'm also open configure representative and uh, sometimes I blog at my, uh, my name.net. Um, we can learn many lessons uh, to automate our networks from the server side because they typically uh, uh, consist on many more servers than uh, network devices. Uh, SRA teams are generally very large, meaning that uh, many people access the resources of the, those servers uh, at the same time. And uh, the automation methodologies in general have been there for many years, while us are just at the very beginning. And uh, there are many tools that uh, actually have been started to automate servers, uh, some of them including uh, Salt and Ansible Chef for Puppet. Um, and a very large amount of features are already there and you can just use. And we can also learn from uh, previous lessons. We can, there are many, many, many success stories. Um, and uh, there are quite a few platforms now that uh, allow you to, to be uh, managed like servers, like white box uh, devices, Arista US or Cumulus, or other containerized uh, solutions uh, like uh, CISO iOS XR, but only the 60-bit uh, flavor, Cisco Enix OS and so on. There are still some devices that don't allow you to do so, like Junos, Cisco IOS XR, the 32-bit uh, uh, flavor, Cisco IOS XC, iOS, and many, many others. Actually, the majority of the network devices won't let you do so. And uh, this, these methodologies to automate uh, a network devices like servers can be implemented with various tools. For example, Salt, because that's what I'm using, but it's not the only one. And uh, Salt, because it's uh, very scalable, there are uh, very well-known stories like uh, LinkedIn that automates uh, 70,000 servers. So if uh, we apply the same methodologies, we'll be able to automate networks with uh, 70,000 network devices, right? And, but I've never seen uh, such a big network. So basically, if you we apply the same methodologies, we'll be able to automate any kind of network. Uh, it's very good for its concurrency, so no matter how, how large is your team, you'll be able to manage it and to access the resources at any time. Um, Salt is also good for events driven if you need it. Uh, it's easy to configure, customizable, and also caches some uh, details for you. In general, uh, the architecture of Salt uh, is uh, hub and spoke, meaning that uh, you have uh, some servers, you install a uh, software called uh, Salt Master, you install it on the server, and uh, on the other servers that you want to manage, you install a product called uh, Salt Minion. They all are open source and free, but you need to install it on the device you want to manage, while on um, a traditional network equipment, you can't do so, but you can on uh, open boxes or in uh, containers. Besides uh, this hub and spoke, you can uh, also have a more complicated architecture where a minion contacts multiple masters, not only one. Or you can avoid the master at all. We can, and each uh, minion will be able to take decisions by itself. And what I'm saying by this is uh, to install the software directly on the network device. And you can do so. Uh, and uh, I have an example for Arista EOS. It's uh, just uh, straightforward. I have uh, here the steps. Uh, so first step is to download the Swix archive. It's an extension uh, that uh, has, comes with all the packages and all the software necessary to uh, have the salt minion directly on Arista. You just copy it uh, from that URL, from uh, netops.life to the flash, uh, then uh, you move uh, the, the Swix archive to the extension uh, file server that uh, exists on the Arista. Install the, the extension, you check that is there, and then you have to uh, enable the local Unix socket, so the salt uh, menu will be able to uh, access and to uh, configure your device and has access uh, to your configuration and uh, any other uh, management. And then, all you have to do is to execute the script, just execute this bash script, 
and you're all done. You have just transformed your uh, router or switch into a server. Uh, I have another example for Cumulus Linux. The installation is even simpler. You just download a script, uh, the bootstrap script provided by the uh, Solstack community. You download it and don't forget, check the script, don't do it in one line. That's a major security issue. It is a shame I see it sometimes. Download the script, look into it, make sure you, it does the right thing, it doesn't hack your network, and uh, just run it and this will, uh, is uh, smart enough and knows what to install to make, uh, transform your network device into a server. Afterwards, you can execute like if on a server you execute uh, this command, let's say disk.usage, that gives you the usage on uh, all the available uh, disks. You can use the same, exactly the same on a network device. So this is exactly connected, uh, collect, uh, this output is collected from a network device that is in production at the edge of our network that carries a pretty good amount of internet traffic. And this is uh, not limited to only certain commands. You can uh, do absolutely anything you can do on a server, you can do on your network device, meaning you can manage files, you can uh, look into the memory usage, you can uh, uh, edit files, you can uh, uh, m uh, see the CPU usage and many other things. You basically have no limitations. What you can do on a server, you can do exactly the same on the network device. Um, if you wanna hear more about uh, this, uh, I am on a chat, what the network to code is a Slack chat, you can join there and look for two, two rooms, they are called Softec and uh, Napalm, or contact by email me and uh, my colleague Frankie, which, uh, and Frankie actually built like 75% of this project. And right now if you have any questions. Hi, Peter Britton from MetaSwitch. Um, very interesting presentation. Just a quick question. Why did you pick an, uh, an agent-based management platform rather than an agent, what, agent-less one like uh, Ansible? Uh, the difference is uh, that you, with uh, Ansible, for example, you connect via SSH, so wouldn't make much difference uh, against what we do nowadays. Uh, the, the big difference is uh, in uh, scalability while uh, on the network device you have direct resources there, and uh, as you, uh, I mentioned before, there are well-known uh, uh, projects where they had almost no scalability boundaries. 70,000 uh, servers is an impressive number. Um, I've seen many setups where people tried with uh, other tools that are agentless. Uh, it cracked at uh, 200 devices. Thank you very much. Any more questions? I uh, have uh, two more slides um, uh, for contributions. Don't forget to get <laughs> something back to the community. It's always nice to use and uh, we, we love uh, that we are able to help. And it's also nice for everyone else if you have uh, something to, uh, to adjust and to provide. Uh, other users will, would appreciate any time. And I have here some, a list of other references that might interest you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>